On the feast of Adam and all primates, we affirm our primate ancestry, an affirmation that has brought down wrath upon us from those who arrogantly persist in evolutionary denial. But we affirm also the divine agency that has caused us to be created in the way that we were. And this has enraged those scientific fools who say in their hearts, there is no God. These claim to prove the non-existence of God because they cannot put him in a test tube and weigh and measure him. But God is pure spirit. So how can anyone reason that the failure to measure the immeasurable proves its non-existence? God is indeed the no-thing, the no-thingness, that through which and by which all material things exist. For if there were not such a no-thingness, existence would be so crammed full of materiality that no one thing could be distinguished from another. The mere existence of separate material things is a proof of the no-thingness of God. Where were the scientific fools when God laid the foundations of the earth by interposing his own spirit between one blob of matter and another, thus giving rise to forms? Where were they when the morning stars sang together? But let us forgive them in our hearts, for it is not our task today to reprimand, but to contemplate our own earthly state in all humility. God could have made man out of pure word, but he did not use this method. He could also have formed him from the dust of the earth, which in a sense he did, for what else can be signified by dust, but atoms and molecules, the building blocks of all material entities. In addition to this, he created us through the long and complex process of natural and sexual selection, which is none other than his ingenious device for instilling humility in man. He made us a little lower than the angels, but in other ways, and science bears this out, we are closely related to our fellow primates, a fact that the haughty ones of this world do not find pleasant to their self-esteem. Our appetites, our desires, our more uncontrollable emotions, all are primate. Our fall from the original garden was a fall from the innocent acting out of such patterns and impulses to a conscious and shamed awareness of them. And from thence comes our sadness, our anxiety, our doubt, our rage against God. True, we, like the other animals, were blessed and ordered to increase and multiply and to replenish the earth. But by what humiliating and aggressive and painful means this replenishing frequently takes place. No wonder we are born to a sense of guilt and disgrace. Why did he not make us pure spirit like himself? Why did he embed us in perishable matter, and a matter so unfortunately monkey-like? So goes the ancient cry. What commandment did we disobey? the commandment to live the animal life in all simplicity, without clothing, so to speak. But we craved the knowledge of good and evil, and we obtained that knowledge, and now we are reaping the whirlwind. In our efforts to rise above ourselves, we have indeed fallen far, and are falling farther still. For like the creation, the fall, too, is ongoing. Ours is a fall into greed. Why do we think that everything on earth belongs to us, while in reality we belong to everything? We have betrayed the trust of the animals and defiled our sacred task of stewardship. God's commandment to replenish the earth did not mean we should fill it to overflowing with ourselves, thus wiping out everything else. How many other species have we already annihilated? Insofar as you do it unto the least of God's creatures, you do it unto Him. Please consider that, my friends, the next time you crush a worm underfoot or disparage a beetle. We pray that we may not fall into the error of pride by considering ourselves as exceptional, alone in all creation in having souls, and that we will not vainly imagine that we are set above all other life 
and may destroy it at our pleasure and with impunity. We thank Thee, O God, for having made us in such a way as to remind us not only of our less-than-angelic being, but also of the knots of DNA and RNA that tie us to our many fellow creatures. Let us sing, O let me not be proud. Let me not be proud, dear Lord, nor rank myself above The other primates through whose genes we grew into your love A million, million years, your days, your methods past discerning Yet through your blend of DNAs came passion, mind, and learning Let me not be proud, dear Lord let me not be proud We cannot always trace your path Through monkey and gorilla Yet all are sheltered underneath Your heavenly umbrella And if we vaunt and puff ourselves With vanity and pride Recall Australopithecus Our animal inside let me not be proud, dear Lord Let me not be proud Let me not be proud, dear Lord Let me not be proud So keep us far from worse traits Aggression, anger, greed Let us not scorn our lowly birth nor yet our primate seed Let me not be proud, dear Lord Let me not be proud oh, Let me not be proud 